what, what is an actual good future? What does that actually look like? Um, or at least bad, or I don't know how you want to characterize it. Um, uh, because it, it um, to a point that was made earlier, I think maybe by, maybe by Sam and, and, and maybe by others, that we're headed towards either superintelligence or civilization ending. Those are those like the two things that are like it, that that'll happen. Intelligence will keep advancing. The only thing that would prevent it from advancing is the, is something that puts civilization into stasis or destroys civilization. So then we have to figure out what is a world that would we would like to be in where there is this um, uh, digital superintelligence. Um, I think the uh, and, then, and, and then another point that I think is really important to appreciate is that um, we are, all of us, already are cyborgs. Um, so you have a machine extension of yourself in the form of your, your phone and your computer and all your applications. You are already superintelligent. Um, so you have a machine extension of yourself in the form of your phone and your computer and all your applications. You are already superhuman. But by far, you have more, more power, more capability than the President of the United States had you know, 30 years ago. Um, if you have an internet link, uh, you, you have an oracle of wisdom, you can communicate to millions of people, you can communicate to the rest of Earth instantly. Um, I mean, these are magical powers uh, that didn't exist not that long ago. So everyone is already superhuman uh, and a cyborg. Um, the limitation is one of bandwidth. So we're, we're bandwidth constrained, particularly on output. Uh, so uh, our input is much better, but our output is extremely slow. Um, you know, if you want to be generous, you could say maybe it's a few hundred bits per second or a kilobit or something like that output. Um, but bit, you know, the way we, we output is like we have our little meat sticks <laughs> that we move very slowly <laughs> and, and push buttons or tap, tap a little screen. Uh, and, and that's just extremely slow. Um, and you know, compare that to a computer which can communicate at the terabit level. These are very big orders of magnitude differences. The, our input is much better because of vision. Um, but even that could be enhanced significantly. So I think, I think the, the, the two things that are needed for, for a, good, a future that we would look at and conclude is good, most likely, is we, we have to solve that bandwidth constraint. Um, with a, with a direct neural interface, I think a high bandwidth interface to the cortex, um, so that we can have a digital tertiary layer that's more fully, more fully symbiotic with uh, with the rest of us. Like we've got we've got the cortex and the limbic system, which seem to work together pretty well. They've got good bandwidth, whereas the bandwidth to our digital tertiary layer is is weak. Um, so so I think if if we can solve that bandwidth issue. Um, and then um, AI can be widely available. So AI, AI, the, the analogy to nuclear bomb is not exactly correct. It, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not as though it's going to explode and create a mushroom cloud. Um, it, it, it's more like if, if, if there were just a few people that had it, they, they would be able to be, be essentially the dictators of Earth. Or, or, or you know, whoever acquired it, and, and, and if, if it was limited to a small number of people, they would and it was ultra smart, they, were, they would have dominion over Earth. So I think it's extremely important that it be widespread and that we solve the bandwidth uh, issue. And if we do those things, then, then it will be tied to our consciousness, tied to our will, um, tied to the sum of individual human will, um, and, and everyone would have it. So it would be sort of still uh, a relatively even playing field. In fact, it would be probably more egalitarian than today.